Chase Elliott is, continues to be our points leader. Regan Smith is uh, second. He's 13 behind. So JR Motorsports has a, has a uh, domination up front there, yeah. top two. Elliott Sadler's in third place. He's 20 points back. Ty Dillon is in fourth place. He's 23 points back. And then in fifth place is Trevor Bain. He is 30 points back. So, again, Chase Elliott is, continues to be our points leader, 13 over teammate Regan Smith. Uh, Dale, for the second straight week, uh, Chase, Chase Elliott uh, has uh, piloted uh, that number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet JR Motorsports to victory lane and, and certainly uh, doesn't cease to amaze us the talent that this young man has. And uh, just what are your thoughts uh, uh, about, uh, you know, him winning back-to-back -back races, racing for the first time at Darlington, and you know how tough this place is. Uh, what's your thoughts about that, Dale? Uh, he, you know, he'd done a great job tonight, obviously. And um, he, uh, you know, he's real impressionable. Does, didn't come in here with, uh, with any assumptions. And he's got a great team with some good cars. Those guys are putting together uh, a lot of good information last year with Regan and learned a lot, and they're ready to succeed. And so he's stepping into a situation each weekend that's really tailored well and uh, very well put together. So um, he come in here unassuming and just drove the car and did what the, you know took what the car would give him. And um, you know he has amazing car control. We saw that on several occasions out there tonight. Um, he uh, has, you know, drove on some pretty slick racetracks in those super late models and spent a lot of time on surfaces very similar to this. So he's uh, very comfortable on a track like Darlington. And, um, you know, he just, uh, everything that he's doing makes sense, but, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And he's got a great level head and good character and, Nothing really rattles him, so when it came down to the end there and it was you know it was time to really get after it, he had his composure and and did what he needed to do and was able to make it work so that's going to be tough to contend with uh for many years so I like to uh think that we're gonna hang on to him for a little bit and uh try to get him ready for the next level, but he's looking like uh he's ahead of schedule. <laughs> That's pretty good. We'll take questions now. We'll start over here with Mike. We'll go to Dustin, David, and uh, Matt. Mike Embry, USA Today. Dale, you mentioned his composure. There was uh, he had several chances over those last few laps to just panic or, or you know whatever and, and, and lose lose the win. Is that something that you can learn in the, at the levels of racing he's been in already, or is that just something he's kind of picked up from his dad? Yeah, I was talking about it last week. I think a lot of that comes from his daddy. They're just they have this very similar disposition, very similar mental makeup, and I think a lot of that comes from his father and just how you know things were handled around the household and how he was raised. But at the same time, you know, he ran some, he won some pretty big late mile races, and I think that he had to keep his composure to get that job done against some of the competition he was racing against. So he learned it on the track too, but. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a mentality that a driver has that he carries with him no matter what. And, you know, there's some guys that they just that everybody handles themselves differently in the race car. And the way he handles himself reminds me a lot of his dad, and I think that just comes from just growing up around his father. He must have really spent a lot of time with his dad and and – and just picked up on a lot of things his dad did and how his dad would handle certain things and make decisions. And uh, he really must have been paying attention because he, um, he's like a carbon copy as far as the mental makeup of, of, of Bill, it seems. I don't even know Bill that well, but it, just watching them together, you can, you know, the only way you can tell them apart is the way, you know, how they look. They both act identical to each other. But, um, even winning this race, I mean, he's excited, but uh, and he can't believe it. But uh, you know, he's not loud, obnoxious. Um, you know, it's it's refreshing to to see how he handles it. Let's go over here to Dustin, then we'll go to David, and then to Matt. 
<clears throat> Dustin Long, MRN.com. Um, Dale, certainly we've seen what, what, what Chase can do. We're seeing what, what Kyle Larson can do, Ryan Blaney, the Dillons, Daryl Wallace Jr. Is the, can you give a sense of perspective of this young group, this young town? Are they doing things similar to what you and Matt and, and Jimmy and Ryan did when you guys came up in that, in that era? Or are they doing some different things that, 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 than what you guys did when, when you guys kind of started changing the game a bit? Yeah, I think we did it like that. Um, I think that we were, you know, when we come in Nationwide Series in 98 and 99, we, we, um, we, we uh, had people pretty excited. And uh, people were very impressed with Matt and what he was able to do in a relatively low buck team. Uh, and, we, you know, there's been many, many cases of that. Uh, I think I don't, you know, I see Kyle do a lot of cool things on the track with car control. Um, and I see these other guys showing some signs of potential and, and it's really good to see. Um, the thing about, I like, the thing I like about Chase, obviously not it, that he's successful in winning, but, uh, his personality, man, he is, I like to call him the new Elvis. He's uh, he's just he's he's the full package, man. I mean, he just has it all, and the sky's the limit with that kid, really. To me, for some reason, and maybe I'm a bit biased, but he just he's a he's he's above the rest and and uh, in his class, and so uh, you know, I just uh, I'm excited for his future, and you know, once he can uh he can't even he ain't even focusing on racing 100 percent. he's still in the school so wait till he gets graduated this is gonna be real trouble for them other boys and yeah, he's gonna be in shop class monday isn't he? yeah yeah <laughs> he's still got four weeks left yeah. wait till that's over with he really gets to concentrating on this racing yeah all right uh david Dale, the way Chase busted up through traffic there at the, at the very end, it looked like he found a little hole and just kind of squirted through it. I mean, what are you thinking watching him do that on, you know, the last, that unfolds the last two laps? Yeah, I really, uh, I, I see, uh, I see a guy who it's, you know, it's surprising to see he, that he makes those moves and his instincts are, are correct, you know. There's some guys that can't, that get, indecisive because they've never they've never been there and they don't know whether the car can can do it and and they don't know whether they need to do it or you know they you can see guys sort of get indecisive in those situations uh but he just he just seems to be able to pull the trigger and and drive it in there he's got a lot of confidence in his car to be able to do those things and so i'm uh, you know I, I get awed by chase as a driver and excited about that potential or that quick, you know, this early in his career, this early in his nationwide career for him to be able to do that on these bigger tracks. These tracks aren't intimidating him. The cars and the competition isn't intimidating him. But also at the same time, I get proud of my cars. I get proud of my company and proud of the stuff we're developing and proud of how far we've came as a company too. So um, it's our car out there doing those things with Chase driving it. So our guys are pumped and proud and the morale in the shops really high we got excited last year with what we were able to do with regan and knew with it this year could be a good year for us yep go ahead we'll go to uh, matt right here there. matt we'll take uh, three more matt chris mike and then we'll end with lee matt weaver popular speed uh you had two really good full years in nationwide before you moved up so looking at chase and how he's kind of on that similar career path what sort of things do you tell him to try to, you know, temper his expectations a little bit and that, you know, yeah, you're, you're having all this success now, but depending on what you guys decide to do and what Rick decides to do, you know, and telling him you're not quite ready, you need to work on this or that or whatever? Uh, we're not having those kind of conversations at, at the moment. Um, he's pretty busy with his school, so I don't see him in a week at all. I only see him at the racetrack, and I really don't want to bother him talking to him and trying to fill him with information during race weekend because he's trying to process what the, what what's happening with the car and practice and all that. So if we, we have those kind of conversations, it'll be away from the track and during the week and maybe on down the road. We're pretty early in this deal. I, th I think that he doesn't need to be in a big rush. If, he, if he's 
you know, stuck around for two years, that'd be plenty to learn what he needs to learn and really get polished in the in the process to be able to move up. And it's it's probably uh, premature to even be talking about that, but he's obviously good and has that real potential to to get to the next level for sure. So uh, I think he can be patient. He's very young and has a whole has a whole life in front of him. If I was him, you know, and we'll talk about that down the road, I think that you would want to, to get two full years in this series and uh, and then move up. But, you know, those decisions really come down to the dollars and who's putting the dollars in on the table. Uh, those are, you know, those that influences it more than anything else, and I'm not that guy. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Bill's really understanding of the situation, I'm sure Bill will, will – will have an influence on on what happens with Chase and how far along he goes and how quickly he does that. But like I said, we're not we're not really in the uh, I'm not really trying to tutor him. Uh we haven't had time to be together. I just uh, was talking to Bill in Victor Lane. I said, "How many more weeks of school?" And he said, "Four." I said, "What's he going to do after that? Are we going to see him in the shop every week?" He says, "Yeah, I'm sending him to Charlotte. He's all yours." So it'll be fun. Let's go to Chris. We'll go to Mike and then end with Lee. Dale Kirsten, I was wondering if you could talk about Greg Ives. I mean, you saw obviously something with what he did with Regan last year, and then you put him with, with Chase this year, and it's just been awesome to see those two uh, get together. Just wondering if you could get your thoughts on, on Greg. He's obviously a great leader for junior motorsports, and obviously uh, it's been a great weekend for the company as a whole the last two weeks with four top tens last weekend and then another good weekend here. Yeah, Greg's situation for, for us and for me is very similar to Chase's. He's been put in this situation to succeed and to move on and so it just so happens that we you know we caught two comments at the same time and uh they're they're paired together and they're working really well together and and if all goes well they should they should likely stick together for for quite some time uh, but that was sort of the intent uh when we when we brought greg's greg down and uh so it's working out really well um and greg has all the potential such a he's such a brilliant mind and uh obviously he's given chase uh some great race cars there's a, must be some good communication there um greg greg is very even keel very calm doesn't get excited uh so i would i would expect them to to continue to improve and uh you know, Greg. Greg's still learning on the fly as far as the particulars of the job, mechanics of the job, getting his crew right, moving pieces around in his crew uh, over the wall gang to get that right. You know, and improving his pit stops and even that dialogue with those guys and the, that working relationship with those guys. He's still sort of learning and understanding how that works, and uh, you know, su succeeding and 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 failing and and succeeding every day in you know at the desk and 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 on the plate and in the shop so he's still going through this you know still learning a lot as a crew chief but uh he's got great potential thank you maybe take one more from for dale and then we'll uh hear from our race winner go ahead yes, mike net from frontstretch.com dale uh, since Brad left, or when Brad left, you guys kind of tailed off a little bit in comparison to, to some of the other top teams in the Nationwide Series. But right now, it sure seems like like your organization is the one to beat. Is it just a, a perfect storm that everything's kind of come together at the right time between driver and cars and crew, or is it uh, is it just the the drivers that good? Well, the the talent that we have in the shop, as far as our drivers and our crew chief. Uh, our crew chief is, is very good right now. We got a lot of good combinations, and and we've got things lined up a lot better. Um, uh, in the years where we were struggling, the pieces of the puzzle weren't quite fitting together exactly the way we needed them to. But the biggest thing that has helped us is we we sort of lost the line of communication from HMS to JRM when it comes to. Uh, engineering help and and a flow of information and engineering help coming back and forth we want to be an asset to hms just as much as we need the help from them we want to be able to turn that information around and give it back to them and ha have them find it useful so that's starting to work and especially when we're running well you know the, our cup teams are coming down and saying what are you guys doing here and there 
uh, air pressure, things like that, that will correlate to the cup car. So that we're, we really sort of strengthen the bond between the two companies to where they work together and help each other, and, and it, it does a world of difference for us to have that kind of resource. But obviously, Chase coming along, Regan coming in, and winning races last year, we've and and Harvick. I mean, he's awesome having him around. He's on teams. He knows what buttons to push and what what how how to make things better. He's a huge influence on our production. So our crew chiefs are are geared up and working together really hard and improving things left and right. And we got to do it all on a budget. So it's not an easy job for them to work in that in that box. So everything's working really well right now. The personnel is great, but the line of commu communication HMS has strengthened the whole company. Dale, congratulations. Uh, we'll let you go. Yes, sir. And uh, congratulations to how uh, JR Motorsports is uh, performing. And good luck tomorrow night, Dale. Okay, let's hear from our race winner. For the second straight week in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, 18-year-old Chase Elliott drives to victory lane. Become the youngest driver to win a nationwide race here at Darlington. You also become the youngest driver to ever win two nationwide races, period. And uh, congratulations, uh, Chase. You're the driver of the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet for JR Motorsports. He's joined by his crew chief, Greg Ives. And uh, just talk about how in the world you won this race tonight. Uh, that's a really, really good question. I honestly have no idea. Um, I would have to go back and watch it. All I know is our outside lane went went really well, and um, having the having the two guys, you know, on two tires was you know somewhat of a good thing, you know, for us, and kind of bottled up the bottom lane, so we were able to get a good run. And um, Kyle tried to make it three wide, getting into one, and I thought if he had made that work, he would have been tough to pass, but. Uh, Fortunately, the outside lane went, and we were able to get to second coming to the white and um, uh, was going to try to get up under Elliott up off a of two, and he got a little bit loose, and I got pretty close to him and uh, was able to get to his outside, which is kind of where I wanted to be anyway, and was able to get through three and four well and, and bring him back around. Well, congratulations. A lot of fun to watch you race. I appreciate it. Greg Ives, talk about this, uh, this win here, second straight. Uh, got to be a big thrill for you, too, as a young crew chief. Yeah, I mean, we really can't can't look at each wind as a consecutive or not. You know, we just try to do our best each week, and you know, if it comes out of there with a win, then uh, you know that's great. And you know, it was it was interesting week to start out. You know, we didn't unload as well as we uh, should have, and we were just able to work on the car and uh, trust our notes that we had from previous years, and uh, just trust uh, you know the tools that like Dale said, you know, we is provided through Hendrick Motorsports and, you know, we're able to give uh, Chase a good race car tonight. And we I mean, have had a few hiccups, you know, we always obviously need to address, you know, a couple hiccups that we had, but, you know, we were able to make it happen, make it work. And, you know, it's that I probably, I haven't been that excited about a uh, race win in, in a while. And, you know, it's just a, the, the way that he was able to go about it and, um, you know, overcome that adversity and uh, keep calm and, you know, know that he, he had to get the best finish that he possibly could. And, you know, if that was a win, that was a win. If it was third, it was third. But, um, you know, th that's that's what it's going to take to uh, keep improving here and uh, bringing good race cars home. That way we can uh, keep building on, on, on it. So, you know, really excited about this one. You know, I'm just I'm just fortunate situation that I have. And, um you know, it's it's a good deal right now. Okay, we'll take questions now for Chase or Greg. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll start right here with Matt and then go to David and Reed. Raise your hand there, Matt. Off to the side there, Bert. Sorry. <laughs> I was just talking to Dale Jr. about your possible, you know, cup ascension, and I'm, I'm curious what do you see your personal timetable being as far as when you get to the cup series and what sort of things do you want to work on before you get there? Well, um, that's a that's a good question. It's one I'm not worried about at all right now. Um, really haven't haven't thought about it a bit to to be honest with you. So this is uh I feel like it's way too early on to be worried about that. Um, you know, the biggest thing we can focus on is I have a great opportunity right now at Junior Motorsports with Napa Auto Parts and uh wanna try to make the very most of that, do the best job I can do behind the wheel for these guys and if we can if we can do that and do it well, I think the future will figure itself out. 
then to read. David, and then read. David Caravella, NASCAR.com. Chase, you talked about getting in position there, heading to the white flag, but it looked like you found a little bit of an opening there. I guess it might have been between Harvick and Kenseth, and he just went. Um, I mean, can you talk about just the lack of hesitancy there and just seeing the little gap and just and just taking it and running with it? Yeah, well, I, th- I guess you're talking about on the back straightaway, and uh, there was a little bit of a gap. I guess I think Matt was uh, on the bottom, and we had a pretty good run, and, I mean, I was pretty committed, you know, and if he was going to slide up in front, he had about, point zero 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 one seconds to do it or the the hole was no longer going to be there so i was pretty well committed at that point to try to roll the top that was really the only option i had to try to win the race and um you know like i said i you know with elliot off too he got a little free and opened up the outside for me that's where i wanted to be um i, I didn't really want to be on the bottom rolling into three because i knew the outside would have been pretty tough so uh just kind of fortunate the way it all worked out uh, I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. It was just one of those situations where it comes down to the, the last two laps of the race, and you have a choice to make whether you want to win the race or, or give somebody a break. I don't think anybody's going to give somebody a break, you know, as far as letting somebody in line, you know, at the end of a race like that. So I feel like I made the same decision anybody else would have in that situation. Let's go over here to Reed. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Chase, um, when you were battling with Kyle Larson with about 40 to go, I mean, it looked like you were both driving as hard as you could. You were both over the edge. Um, Understatement. How did you um, How did you keep those cars apart? And have, have you had any thoughts about, you know, this may be the future and, and I may be doing this with this same guy for a number of years to come? Well, I think I think uh, I'd like to think so. You know, Kyle's obviously a talented guy, and he, he's uh, he's earned his place in this sport. You know, you know, you know for sure. So, uh, like you say, like you said, there was a couple instances there, and one that definitely one that I can think of. I thought our night was 100% finished. Um, I thought both of us were getting ready to to pile it up pretty big, along with probably some more cars behind us. So, it was uh, no idea how both of us held on to that, and he did a really good job holding on to it, and it kind of gave me something to lean up against while I was trying to save it so uh, that was just um, that was a, a crazy lap or so there and like you said we raced really hard and he's fun to race with and um, you know fortunately we were able to race each other pretty clean and you know, we were able to keep her both straight other questions for Chase right over here Mike Mike Hember USA Today Greg uh, watching you on the TV monitor as the race ended it looked like you were just astonished at, at- what happened at the finish did you think you had a, a decent shot at winning it starting from six with knowing what had to happen well you know you, you this sport's uh full of highs and lows you know we just came up you know had a high all all race of 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 you know having a good race car and being in good track position and you know had had a little hiccup on pit road and put us back in the low you know so going back to six you know yeah i felt like we had an opportunity to win with four tires and being on the outside so um it, it's you know these races are so tough to to win as is you know not putting your best foot forward is is the the, the tough thing so you know i had confidence that you know he was going to be able to go on the short run just because our car was that good on the short run and uh you know, we just had to have the right opportunity, the right lane open, and Chase had to make the, you know, instinct call to uh, uh, put the car in the right position. So, um, you know, I, like I said, it, it's it's been a – I was pretty excited about that one and, you know, not not so much shocked but just excited. You know, I, I th- he has the talent and the capabilities to do it, and uh, hopefully uh, we can do, do it again. Let's go to uh, right here to Pete. We'll go to Jim. We'll go to Lee, and then we'll go press box. Pete Yakbelli with the Associated Press. Uh, Chase, you're sitting here matter-of-factly answering questions. I mean, you won two NASCAR races in, in your in, in your first season here. Is this what you thought was going to happen when you hit the track, you know, this, this winter? Ah, uh, well, I mean, honestly, no. I mean, I, I don't know that we ever, you know, expected to to be able to, you know, come and, and – win races at least this fast and you know i feel like uh at least for me you know i knew that our, our team was capable of doing it you know greg and the guys that he's assembled have won races in the past they know how to get the job done and it's kind of just up to me to to do my job right you know on and off the racetrack give them the information they need to make these cars go fast and you know to uh, to have a pretty good program on a mile and a half deal right off the bat was uh was good because i'd never been to those places so 
bringing fast race cars allowed me to adjust to these racetracks more throughout practice and have to worry about the car. So they really deserve all the credit in that aspect. And, you know, I, I think the fact that they're bringing the fast race cars is, is more than anything, you know, right now. We just got to make sure we keep trying to improve and, and grow and, and get better as a race team. Let's go right here to Jim. We'll go to Lee and then press box. Jim Meadow, Charles Observer, uh, two questions. The first one, uh, Dale Jr. was kind of joking earlier saying, Chase still has four weeks of school yet. You guys haven't even seen him fully concentrating on racing. Just wait until he's graduated. Uh, it's funny, but in a way, how has it been to manage all of that at the same time? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, at least for me and the age I'm at right now, I think it's important to, you know, finish up school and uh, not just blow those last few weeks of high school off. Those are times you're not going to get back. So uh, just trying to enjoy that. But at the same time, I get to do what I love to do on the weekends and, I couldn't be uh, couldn't be any happier about what I get to do when I leave school because this is what I've always wanted to do and what I love to do and be a part of. So, um, you know, I still have a few weeks of school left and I still gotta still gotta finish up there too. So I can't forget about that. And uh, but at the same time, still still focus and and try to bring my best effort to the racetrack each weekend and try to balance both of them to the best of my ability. And he also dubbed you the new Elvis. Your thoughts? The new Elvis. I don't know about that. I, I guess I need to shave. I don't know. Uh, shave or, or, or let it grow out some more. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Go over to Lee, and then we'll go to press box. To kind of follow up on what Utter was saying about, you know, just your high school days, you know, because racing's really all you've ever known, but are you even cognizant of your senior prom, your graduation, the graduation parties that follow that, you know, is is that even on your radar screen considering that, you know, you're already doing what you've wanted to do your entire life? Yeah, for sure. No, I definitely can't forget about that. Um, you know, it was a long, long discussed topic uh, leading up to graduation this year, whether or not I wanted to go. And initially I really didn't want to go. Um, I didn't really care anything about it. You know, I just wanted to go race. And the more I thought about it, the more – you don't get to do that twice, so I uh, figured it'd probably be a, a good idea to go and make mom happy. I know she's going to be excited about that one, so I uh, get get to go home and, and hopefully do graduation. That's the Saturday of the Iowa weekend, so fortunately we have a test the day before, so given that the weather is good um, on Friday, we get that test in, and it's good enough to get home and get back. I'm going to try to go home Saturday morning, do graduation, and then uh, come back on Saturday night and qualify and for the race on Sunday. I think it's either tonight or tomorrow night, one of the two. So I'm not not, not going to that one. So, uh, but uh, I went last year. The most important thing is graduation to me. That's right. I had a good date tonight. Lady in black. Can't forget about that. It's the best date you can ask for. He just rode everybody's lead. All right, let's go to the press box. Go that was ahead. all Greg. Tony Bullock with the Courier Tribune. Chase, could you just talk about? throughout tonight your mental makeup and the mental challenges you had because you had a couple of cup veterans talk about how you pretty much had the car to beat tonight and yet you get down to crunch time and you find yourself in pretty much just about the worst situation you'd been in all night long and you had to drive up through there to get the win yeah i don't i don't know necessarily know that it was the worst worst place and the worst place would have been fifth um honestly because the inside was inside is really not the preferred lane anyway and especially since both of the guys on the front row had uh, only two new right side tires so it kind of worked out that we ended up being six I guess that was just kind of the way it was meant to be there you know we had a hook up on the pit stop but uh, coming out six ended up ended up being a good thing for us so just trying to uh, trying to make the most of our race car there at the end and the biggest thing we try to stay out of trouble tonight and this place can reach out and bite you it just about did me um, a, a couple times I can think of one really good one getting into turn one with, with the 42 and um, just tried to Try to do our best to, to stay out of the fence as much much as possible. I got into it just a couple times uh, down there in three and four, and uh, hopefully, you know, it didn't didn't kill our car too bad. So just tried to avoid that tonight, and um, just tried to make the most of what we had. Any other questions in the press box? No more. I think I saw one more hand down here. Finish up here with Mike, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. One for each of you. Uh, Chase, I read after the Texas win that there's only a handful of kids in your class that really knew what you did on the weekends. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be a few more of them paying attention after tonight? Uh, I mean, I hope so. I mean, like I said, you know, I just my really close friends watch and watch each weekend, and um, 
it's been it's been really funny. I've kind of I've almost turned them into race fans. So uh, I think it's been kind of cool to watch them come to the races and you know be a part of some of the races so far this season. Has been really neat, and uh, I think they plan on coming to some more. So it's really cool to kind of see that because really before. Before I explain anything to them, they don't really have any interest for it. But now that they kind of understand it and and kind of follow it a little bit, they seem to like it. And I think that's, I think that would be the case for a lot of people if they just give it a chance. So uh, cool to see that, and uh, looking forward to obviously seeing those guys this week. And for Greg, uh, the last couple stops, I think you guys lost eight spots over the last couple stops. Is uh, pit practice going to be a little more intense leading up to the next race? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have to get on anybody. They, I mean, this team knows what what we need to be capable of so uh you know we're gonna go back and you know look over things and you know try to correct the wrongs and try to try to make sure that you know we keep everybody in a positive lookout that going forward you know we can't we we definitely don't uh sweep any uh mistakes under the rug so we know what what it takes to to win these races and what it's going to take to stay on top so uh nobody out there especially on, our, on my team knows that you know mistakes are are, are tolerated but uh we'll we'll go back and we'll correct them and you know we'll come back next week with or after uh at richmond and you know we're going to be better than what we were this week so we can only grow from it like i told the guys this you know you know the the positives we have to uh grow from it and the the negatives we have to learn and learn from it so you know we're going to learn from the negative stuff tonight and we're going to grow with the positives and just go out there and you know by richmond we're going to be a better race team so that's that's our plan in the off off week and going into the next race final question chris you have one final question chris knight catch com. chase i was just wondering if you talked to mr hendrick and if you did what he say I did. Uh, I got a phone call there about midway through the Victory Lane celebrations. Um, he actually he actually left the house before the end of the race, so he missed it. He missed the end of the race, which is uh, a little disappointing, but that's okay. Um, he, he said he left the house, and he got on the road. I guess he, he had a commitment somewhere, and uh, his phone started blowing up, and uh, he, he realized what had happened, so I guess he got a hold of mom. So that was, um, that, that was cool to get that phone call. I hate that he missed the end of the race, but uh, looking forward to having him back at the racetrack with us here again soon. Chase and uh, Greg, congratulations. Uh, many, many more wins to come. Enjoy this one, and uh, just keep it up. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you all.